Hello everyone, welcome to Calvary International Baptist's um, Wednesday night verse by verse and chapter by chapter Bible study. Let's start with a prayer. So Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for uh, tonight that we can you know, be on YouTube to share your word and to study your word. And Lord, we're you know, in the Psalms now and Lord, may you just um, help us. Help us to just open up our hearts, open up our spiritual minds, and, and just learn from you. And to drink in your word, to eat your word. And let your word just transform our hearts, our minds. Lord, may you bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. So, in Psalm um, 79, it's kind of a, a, a sad psalm where... In fact, the next three is, um, uh, tonight we're going to go 79, 80, 81, Lord willing. And it's about the destruction of, of Israel, well, Jerusalem. And the devastation that they had. And this was probably around 596 uh, BC where um, the Babylonians were, you know, the um, in Habakkuk, it's talked about Chaldeans, the Babylonians, that they um, they 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 destroyed. Um, they burned down pretty much took, took down every single home, uh, burned, uh, raised the temple and burned the temple down. Um, that's Solomon's temple, and it's um, it, it it was just everything was down, and people. A lot of people died, and it was just a, a devastating scene. And uh, the song is was, you know, the psalmist wrote, you know, how long, how long, oh God, will this go on? It's a, it's sad, but I think one of the biggest things that you and I tonight we need to um, think about is that God, His heart is for none to perish. God's heart is actually to, to allow each one of us to participate in His plan. But only if we listen. Um, and God will never force His plans on us. We would have to, um, you know, be willing to do it. But a lot of times, and, and Israel they're unwilling to listen to God and thus consequences. And, and when we study this, um, I'd like you to start thinking about our own lives or, you know, our own nation. Um, you know, how, how are we reacting to what God's telling us and what we know, if it's, we know it's the right thing to do and what God wants us to do, are we doing it? All right, let's start. Psalm 79, verse 1. Uh, o God, the nations have come into your inheritance. Your holy temple they have defiled. Remember, the temple was just destroyed, burned down. They have laid Jerusalem in heaps. All the houses were down. And, I mean, it was, they ravaged, Babylonians, the Chaldeans, they ravaged all of Jerusalem. It was terrible. Um, verse 2. The dead bodies of your servants they have given as food for the birds of heaven, the flesh of your saints to the beasts of the earth. I mean, bodies were being piled up and all the animals were eating the bodies. The flesh of your saints to the beasts of the earth. Verse 3, their blood they have shed like water all around Jerusalem. And there was no one to bury them. There were so many dead bodies, there's not no one to bury them. Can you just imagine? I mean, in David's time, in Solomon's time, they, they, they had everything. I mean, silver, I mean, they had so much gold. Silver was like rocks, like pebbles. They built, the, uh, David prepared all the raw material for the temple, and Solomon built this temple. It was a wonder, and people were amazed. And now, in heaps. And there was a reason. And I, as I said, they did not just do what God 
wanted them to, the, the plans that God laid out for them, and what God told them to do and what God told them not to do, they would do the opposite. And it's very, very sad. No one to bury them. We have become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to those who are around us. The enemies of Israel, and we can say the enemies of God, they, um, they, they started laughing at Israel. See what happened to you guys? Your God's not strong. And back then the people, you know, all the heathen nations, they all believe that, you know, the strength of a nation is based on their God. And if we have, a, had a, have war, you know, and, and I beat you, that means my God is stronger than you. What they didn't understand was that God was showing Israel that because you have forsaken me and trusted other idols, trusted other gods, and you've forsaken the living God. See, your, your idols made out of hands, your idols that don't even speak, your idols is not the living God, they're false. They can't protect you. And God allowed it to happen. He wanted Israel to realize that, hey, you want to go on your own? Go ahead. See what happened. But the heathen nations, the nations who are worshiping um, Aphrodite, the, uh, the uh, Moab, all these other nations, they don't understand this. They didn't understand. They thought, you know, our God's bigger than yours. But no, God is sovereign. Jehovah is sovereign. And He's going to, He won't force you. But He'll let you know who to trust. And it should be uh, lessons learned. But throughout history, mankind had to relive this lesson over and over again. And so the psalmist uh, said, How long, Lord, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? You know, God, He is the Creator. He is the sovereign God. He doesn't like His people, His family, to go after other gods. And, you know, if you want to go after, God is a jealous God. And He said, well, How could God be jealous? Hey, He's the Creator. He can do whatever He wants. For God, if you're his family, if you're part of him, it's almost like a marriage covenant. And in a marriage covenant, we don't go after other people. You have, your, you have a husband, you have a wife. And we, we love our husband, we love our wife. And we don't go after someone else's wife, someone else's husband. There'll be a righteous jealousy there. And God is telling them that, hey, you should have no other idols before me. But they did exactly the opposite. They started worshiping everything under the sun. And, and they just ignored the Lord, ignored His Word. And it's like a cycle. And once they, you, you ignore God and God's just going to let you go and you get into trouble. And then, you know, you come back crying to God. God forgives it. Is a bad cycle. It needs to be, but human beings are like this. You and I need to learn. Okay, um, let's get going. And so how long will you be angry forever? Will, you, will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not know you and on, your, on the kingdom that do not call on your name. You know, we always like to say that, hey, you know, pour out your wrath on, on enemies, God. You know, not, not on us. But you know, there's something about this also. Because they had a problem, you know, the Babylonians, these Chaldeans, they, they, um, they're very wicked people. And Habakkuk, if you read, uh, it's around four chapters, if you read Habakkuk, um, he had an issue with God about this. Uh, he complained to the Lord about, you know, Israel is corrupt. The government is corrupt. We're bad people. 
And so he even told the Lord that say, you know, I don't want to know anything more because I know it's just, you know, we're just really bad. But then he complained to the Lord saying that even though we're really bad, but the Babylonians, these Chaldeans, they're even worse. But you're using them, and, and God told Habakkuk that, hey, he's raising up a group of people to judge Israel for all the bad deeds that they're doing. They're turning away from the Lord, doing wicked things. And God told Habakkuk that I'm using the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, to do this. And, Israel, and Habakkuk was going, what? They're even worse than us. And you're using them? How could you do that? But God is sovereign. God can use whatever He wants to make corrections, to tell people to turn back to Him. And he, so that's what, and Habakkuk had a big issue with this. And sometimes we're thinking that, you know, how can God use those guys? They're, you know, they're, they don't even worship, they don't even have churches. They, they worship other religions but God can use anyone for his human instruments that God used the uh, Babylonians God used the Moabites the Ammonites as a human as a um, human instrument for judgment when Israel was wrong and then God will use Israel to wipe out others too as his human instruments for judgment Okay, and um, so, uh, verse 7, For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste to his dwelling place. So, you know, he, uh, God will use people for his purposes. And, but we sometimes don't understand, um, understand why God would do that. And, uh, but we need to, we need to realize that we should be in this position. We should be listening to the Lord. But sometimes when things are going well, we turn to not listen to the Lord. And then when things are going bad, we listen to the Lord. We need to listen to the Lord no matter if it's good or bad. We need to have that relationship with Him where it's a trusting relationship. So uh, I, I mentioned that the relationship between us and the Lord and Jesus is the groom and we're the bride. Um, when we read the New Testament, is a marriage relationship. And it's for better, for worse. And, and it's till death do we part, right? But the beauty of being in God's family is that even death, physical death, will bring us glory. It's an eternal relationship. Jesus laid down his life for you and me while we were yet sinners. He protects his bride. And once you and I realize how much Jesus loves you and me, we respond to his love naturally. And it's a relationship for better, for worse. We should be in a position, should be in that position where, you know, we're just gonna ignore um, our group. We shouldn't be doing that. We should be having that good relationship with him. And then um, verse eight, oh, do, do not remember former iniquities against us. Let your tender mercies come speedily to meet us. For we have been brought very low you know, um, God sees us. God is a God of mercy. And the psalmist wants God not to remember our iniquities, but remember us in your mercy. Good prayer. We should never demand justice for, and usually we don't. We said, hey, give that guy, you know, you know, I, I need justice because he uh, did this, bad things or they did these bad things but you know something we need to ask for mercy and I actually believe and I think it's a good thing we should encourage people 
to turn to God and ask for mercy. But it's sad when Jesus encourages us to be merciful and Jesus tells us to repent and turn to Him. We just don't listen. And thus, consequences. Okay. And then, verse 9, Help us, O God, of our salvation for the glory of Your name. And deliver us and provide atonement for our sins. For Your name's sake. You know, for atonement for our sins. And actually, this is going to be true a thousand years later. Jesus provides the atonement for our sins, our permanent atonement for our sins, for those who respond to His invitation, for those who repent and turn to Him and ask the Lord to transform us and to walk in the Spirit, to abide in Him. He will he already atone for our sins. It's for his name's sake. Why should the nation say, where it is your God? Remember, all these nations, all these heathen nations, they believe that, hey, if we defeat any you guys, that means our God, little g, is bigger than your God. Not true, right? Because as we know, these guys, the Israelites disobeyed the Lord. And God to say, hey, you want to go your way? Go your way. See what happens. It's not that our God is weaker. Our God is sovereign. But He, um, he will. He will let you do what you wanted to do. But it's best to do what He wants us to do. And the thing is this. God wants us to be dependent on Him. And it's important to realize that without Him, we can't do nothing. And, um, okay, let's get going here. Why should the nation say, where is, your, where is their God? Let there be known among the nation in our sight the avenging of the blood of your servants, which have been shed. Let the groaning of the prisoners before you according to the greatness of your power and return to our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom. So the psalmist is saying that, hey, our Lord, get them seven times more. Uh, their reproach with which they have reproached you, O Lord. Even though we pray this, we're saying, oh, go get them. But sometimes, sometimes it's good to pray and I believe the Lord would want us to pray. God's been so merciful to you and to me, and I know He's been so merciful to me. And, you know, there are times that I'm amazed at how God's been so merciful, and I'm so thankful. I mean, nothing to be, I mean, so full of gratitude to our Lord. So, if He can forgive me, a sinner, uh, we should pray even for the people who are against us, even for our enemies, that the Lord would touch their hearts, that Lord, help them to realize is to come back to you, be merciful to them. And um, I believe that's a good prayer to pray and God see how the Lord could change their hearts too. Okay. So instead of saying sevenfold, um, but you know, there are times that people's heart gets really hard, then, uh, you know, I would um, ask the Lord for wisdom in how to deal with it. Okay, verse 11. Let the groaning of the prisoners come before you according to the greatness of your power. Preserve those who are appointed to die and return to our neighbor's seven hope for their bosom. Their reproach with which they have reproached you, O Lord. So, verse 13, your people and sheep of your pasture will give you thanks forever. We will show forth your praise to all generations. I mean, so sad that they had to go through this. 
is so sad, it, it actually is so tragic. And um, this is actually, this song here is actually the background that leads to lamentations. Um, if you remember Jeremiah, he, uh, he was in a cave and he was look overseeing, looking at what happened in Jerusalem. It's so sad that they had to go through this. And remember, he re um, Jeremiah uh, actually uh, tried to warn the, the, the Israelites that, hey, you know, we sin, and, and the Lord told me to just, hey, we, we should just uh, let the Babylonians uh, take us prisoner. Uh, the Lord will protect us, and, the, uh, and this place won't be destroyed. But they, the Babylonians, the, all the Chaldeans, they were laying siege on uh, Jerusalem. It was three separate times. It was over years. And after the first siege, um, Jeremiah was telling the, the people, saying that, hey, we, we, we've we sinned. We know we sinned. You know, we should just um, let, let them in. We're, the Lord will protect us. We're going to be prisoners, but the Lord will protect us. And there's no loss of life. There's going to be, the place will be, uh, uh, not be destroyed. But then there are false prophets. People who pretended to know God would tell the Israelites, saying that no, 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 uh, God, you know, you know, we're going to have peace because we're going to destroy these guys. And they would put on these little horns, and they're running around saying that we're going to push the Babylonians, all these Chaldeans, we're going to push them away. And the king believed these guys, these false prophets, and. Jeremiah was actually arrested for uh, going against, you know, the, you know, saying things like, hey, we should just let the Babylonians have And so he was arrested. And we know the history. Babylon took over and destroyed the nation, destroyed the uh, Jerusalem, destroyed the temple. All these people God sends people to warn, to teach, to encourage. God sends prophets in the Old Testament. God sends missionaries, pastors in, you know, today. But most people don't listen. And even people in churches, they won't listen. They only want to listen to what pleases them, what pleases their flesh. So we need to be careful too. All right, uh, Psalm 80, uh, verse 1. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who uh, led Joseph like a flock, you who dwell between the cherubim, shine forth. Um, cherubims are, um, are angels. Um, there's a hierarchy of angels, and in seminary we studied angelology, and, and I know it's the study of angels. There are different types of angels throughout in the Bible, and there's hierarchies. And the cherubim are the highest order of angels. And actually, if you are um, in Ezekiel one, in in, um, in Ezekiel ten, it talks about angels. And then also uh, in Revelation four, it talks about the cherubim. And you know. In the Bible, it talks about that um, when Moses had to make um, come up with a tabernacle, you know, the tent, and the Holy of Holies is 15 by 15 and uh, by 15, so it's a 15 cube, and there's a mercy uh, ark of the covenant, and on top of, top of the ark of the covenant, there's a mercy seat, of gold, um, and then there's cherubim on both sides, and the wings expand out all the way to the wall. And it's a replica, a picture of the throne of God in heaven. So we know cherubims are in the Holy of Holies. And even in um, the Bible, in the Old Testament, it talks about that um, Satan is called the anointed cherub. And it could be that he's the higher, the chief of the cherub before 
um, he decided he wants to be just like God and then became Satan and took one third of, of the angel world uh, to be on his side. Um, so, you who dwell between the cherubs shine for it. Before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh stirred up your strength and come and save us. Restore us, O God, cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. I mean, they're in trouble. They, they're, they're prisoners in Babylon and they, he's asking the Lord to restore them and you know, it's, the Lord is not going to do it for another for 70 years. And the reason for the 70 years is that for 490 years, um, they were in the promised land and they didn't follow God's law that every seventh year there should be rest in the land for, but God will always keep his word. So if you're not going to do it willingly, God will get make sure his word is completed. So while they're away for 70 years, the land of Israel rested 70 years. Um, verse 4. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry against the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them tears to drink in great measure. You have made us a strife to our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves against. Again, the enemies of Israel are just having a field day. See, they thought they were so good, and they were for a long time. Look at the days, King, uh, the days of David, the days of Solomon. It's after Solomon, everything started going downhill. But, uh, and now uh, all the enemies are laughing. Verse 7, restore us, O God of hosts. Cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of, uh, you have brought a vine out of Egypt. Nation of Israel was likened unto the grapevine. And you have cast out the nations and planted it. You prepare room for it and cause it uh, to take deep root. And it filled the land. The hills were covered with its shadow and the mighty cedars and its boughs. She sent out her boughs to the sea and her branches to the river. Why have you broken down her hedges so that all who pass by the way pluck her fruit, the boar, the boar out of the woods uproots it, and the wild beast of the field devours it. You know, God took uh, Israel out of Egypt, out of the burdens of Egypt, and they had to go through a lot, in fact, 40 years in the wilderness. But you know, even though Israel, I mean, these people were rebellious, they sinned, but God was always faithful. God led them at night with a pillar of fire. God kept them cool in the daytime with the cloud. And the Shekinah glory was on them through the tabernacle. You know, God was always faithful. But with that said, when Israel sinned, there's always consequences and a big consequence that this for them during that when he was leading them out of Egypt 40 years instead of just maybe a month or a couple months um, 40 years verse 14 return we beseech you O God of hosts look down from heaven and see and visit this vine the psalmist once is requesting the Lord to come and help visit us. Israel, this nation, the people needs help. And the vineyard which your right hand has planted and the branch that you have made strong for yourself, it is burned with fire, it is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand upon the Son of Man, whom you made strong for yourself. Look at verse 17. It's very, very important. This is actually a messianic portion of the song. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. Who's the man upon God's right hand? 
is Jesus, is the Messiah. He's upon God's right hand right now. He is the one who's advocating for us. What was the Messiah called in the Bible? The Son of Man. Look, upon the Son of Man, whom you made strong for yourself. They were crying out to the Messiah, the Son of Man, who's at the right hand of the Father. Jesus Christ came down to earth, died for your sins and my sins, ascended to heaven, he resurrected and ascended to heaven, now at the right hand of the Father, advocating for us, but he will come back again. And it's gonna be um, awesome. Every knee will bow, every tongue confess, every eye will see. And this part every eye will see, right now, with satellite TV, with hand, with, with, with um, cellular phones, with smartphones, every eye is gonna see that Jesus, when he comes back, and I believe it's gonna be soon. Well, it's at least closer than yesterday. But with everything that's happening uh, throughout this world, uh, looking at Revelation, looking at the whole Bible, He is coming back. Are you ready for the Lord to come back? I hope so. And then um, verse 18, Then we will not turn back from you. Revive us and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. And then Psalm 81 you know, it's an um, encouragement to sing to God out loud. Verse 1. Sing aloud to God our strength. Make a joyful shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and strike the timbre, the pleasant heart, heart and the lute. Blow the trumpet at the time of the new moon and the full moon of our solemn feast day. For this is a statute for Israel, a law of God of Jacob. This is... This he established in Joseph as a testimony that he went throughout the land of Egypt, which I heard a language I did not understand. You know, the Israelites uh, in the Psalms, uh, the psalmist always had a way of looking back of how God took care of them, how God was there for them when they were in trouble. And, and the biggest trouble they had was in Egypt because for all those hundreds of years, they were in captivity and they were under burden. And in fact, they were so burdened that they, and, and I, I'm one of the guys who believe that the pyramids, uh, the, the slaves, the Israelites were there to build, they had they actually had to carry um, these bricks um, on their shoulders, and they had these straps. They just should make them wear straps and carry. It's something hundreds of pounds of bricks, and then they had these baskets where they had to carry the clay, and some of the clay is 200 pounds under the hot sun of of Egypt, and this is but God delivered them. And here, verse 6, I removed his shoulder from the burden. This is the burden of carrying those, those bricks. His hands were freed from the basket, the basket that carries the clay, sometimes up to 200 pounds. You, you called in trouble and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the water of Meribah. God tested the Israelites. And God sometimes would see who's real and who's not, even in your life and my life. It's always easy to be really loving to God when things are going well. Piece of cake. Oh Lord, thank you for the big raise. Thank you for the promotion. Thank you for the good health. Oh Lord, thank you for help, you know, allowing me to make a zillion dollar, you know, all these things. It's easy. But when things are going sideways, are you still gonna praise the Lord? You know, all these people coming out 
of Egypt. And, you know, they were crying out to the Lord. God heard them. And they're, they're praising God. And, but as soon as they hit the first hurdle, where the mountains on both sides and the Red Sea in front of them, nowhere to go, they started cursing. Oh, we should have just stayed there. There's so much good food and all that. They forgot all the clay, the bricks they had to carry on their backs under the hot sun. They forgot all the baskets, 200 pounds of clay they carry day in and day out every day. They forgot about that and they started cursing and then just getting angry at God. And God opened up the Red Sea for them. They went through the Red Sea. They started praising God again. But at the end of their journey, all closer to the end of their journey, you remember they went 40 years. They went to a place called Meribah. And they're just complaining to Moses again. And Moses had it. And he went to God and said, these guys are just terrible. They kept 40 years. And God said, hey, go off to the rock and, and, and speak to the rock and I'm going to get water. And, and Moses went out to a soul man and he started getting his man and he smit the rock and water did come out. But God said, no, no. I didn't tell you to smite the rock. You're supposed to talk to the rock. Speak to the rock. It was a picture in the New Testament of how the first time they had to have water, Moses struck, God told him to strike. But the second time to speak, it was a picture of Jesus, our rock, our savior. Jesus the first time was nailed, was struck, to the cross, nailed to the cross. But the second time, later on, we just have to ask him to be our savior, to talk, to have that conversation, to accept him, and not never to strike again, not the rock. And Moses, because of that action, could not go into the promised land um, at that time. So God tests, God would test to see if we, who we really, really are. And when things are going sideways, do you still trust in the Lord? Are you still going to just walk with him? Well, will you act crazy and totally ignore the Lord? I hope you walk with him. Verse eight. Hear, O oh my people, and I will admonish you, O oh Israel, if you will listen to me. And God is telling them to listen. Come listen. Listen to me. There shall be no foreign God among you, nor shall you worship any foreign God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. You know, if you follow me, God's saying, if you just do what I tell you. Follow me. And I will take care of you. I will open your mouth wide. I'm going to fill it. But don't go follow other gods, other idols. Because this is a marriage relationship. But the Israelites did not listen. That's why Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. What's mammon? Money or the materials that money can buy. People worship mammon. Even people in church, they worship mammon. They, they believe that, oh, this is mine and not God's. And I'll just give just a little bit here. They forget, they forgot that who's given them the, the ability to earn money and who's given them the breath to breathe to make money? Who holds their heartbeat in their hand? It's God. What are we doing with God's stuff? We're just managers. We're managers of the 
the blessings that God have us manage. And one day we're going to have to give an account of how we manage. Verse 11. But my people would not heed my voice. My people doesn't want to listen. And Israel would have none of me. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart to walk in their own counsel. I would never want this want God to say this about me. I gave John Lim over to his stubborn heart and to walk in his own counsel. You see, my flesh wants to go there, but God wants me to go up here. He has the best plan, but if I keep insisting, if I'm being stubborn, if I keep insisting do this, God will never force you into a relationship. He'll just let you go. He'll give, he, he'll give you over to your own stubborn heart. I mean, he just, he said, help, go ahead. I'm not going to force you. He'll give you over to what you want to do. It's a very hard road. It's a road where what Israel, Jerusalem, the people of Jerusalem had to go through. It was decimated. Temple came down. Everybody was ravaged. Bodies piled up. It was terrible. Oral. <sighs> you know, God laments over this. But man, we do the same thing over and over again. When God blesses us, we just tend to forget His blessing. He said, oh, I did it, I did it. And then we forget about God. And it's a repeated cycle. But you know something? If we follow the Lord, if we do what He tells us to do, no matter what the situation is, it is the most satisfying experience. It is most satisfying to your heart, to the needs of your heart, when you do what God wants you to do, even when everything is a storm, storming outside. It is satisfying. It is so good. You know, I come, Jesus said, I came that you may have life, that people may have life. And it's an everlasting life. It's a life overflowing, abundant life. Uh, let's not ever have God says, say that I gave you over to your own stubborn heart. To walk in your own counsel. Verse 13. Oh that my people would listen to me. That Israel would walk in my ways. This is God's heart. He wants to bless. But people would listen. Oh that my people would listen to me. That Israel would have, walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies. And turn my hand against their ad adversaries. I would take care of their enemies. I would get rid of their enemies. If you just walk with me, I would take care of all the issues if you walk with me. The haters of the Lord would pretend submission to him, but their faith would endure forever. There are people who are pretenders. The Pharisees were pretenders. They thought they knew it all. They were for the law. They wrote the law. But they were pretenders. The haters of the Lord would pretend submission to him. Oh, we're following God. We're in the temple. We're teachers of the law. But Jesus stood right in front of them. They don't even recognize him. And he called them out as hypocrites. And their faith would endure forever. Verse 16. He would have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with the honey from the rock I would have satisfied you. God wants to bless his people. God wants to protect his people. God wants to lead his people. If we're willing to do that. But Jesus, the Israelites repeated after a thousand years. Jesus looking at Jerusalem says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. 
how my heart longs for you. And Jesus wept. He cried, the Son of Man, Son of God, cried because he saw what was going to happen to Jerusalem again. In 30 plus years later, when Jesus was looking at Jerusalem, he saw the devastation that the Romans, not the Chaldeans or Babylonians, he said the Roman soldiers, they're going to come and destroy, utterly destroy Jerusalem, burn down the temple. It was, it's going to be terrible. And he cried. And for you and me, God wants to bless you. God wants to lead you if you're willing to be led. But we're not willing. We want to do our own thing. We're saying that I've got a better plan, God. You just need to just, you know, make it smooth for me. I've got a better plan. But God's not going to play that game. God wants us to follow Him. Prayer is not demanding from God. Prayer is actually God changing our heart from here to here, changing our plans to be incongruent to His plan. And that's the best. It's the most satisfying. Are you willing? Are you finally willing to do it God's way? I hope so. I pray so. And I'll tell you from personal experience that it's the best way. There's no other way. You keep going this way, you're going to go down sideways. But come back to the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word. We want to do it your way, Lord. We need to learn from the past. We need to have that lesson learned. You know, I remember even just teaching the prodigal son where the father came and ran to his son. And the father came out from the house to meet his elder son. The father came out and reached out. But only one responded. One said, I am sorry. I sinned against the God and I sin against you. Make me a servant. But the father blessed the son, forgave the son. And the prodigal rejoiced with the father. But the elder, eldest one didn't. He stayed outside. He said, hey, I'm deserving. I want to do it my own way. But he stayed outside. No rejoicing. Lord, help us to repent. Help us to turn back to you. Help us not to be so stubborn. Help us to be broken before you. And come to you. We need you, Lord. We know you want your heart is to forgive, to bless. I pray anyone who's listening right now would stop the stubbornness and say, Lord, forgive me. I want to come back to you. I want to do it your way. Help me to do it your way. Guide my life. I pray this for anyone who's listening. Lord, guide their life. Guide my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining me, and I pray you can join me again next Wednesday. God willing, God bless you.